back to another awesome video. Do you know what these things are? No. These are old car stereos. They look very different than the car stereos of today. One difference is they are standard square shapes. Another is they probably have a lot less features. On mom's star car stereo, I can play what I want in the back. Not on these. Can we listen to something else? When I'm driving the car, I get to choose the radio station. When you're driving, we'll listen to your radio station. Today, today's car stereos are less modular. They're a lot more integrated with the vehicle, with GPS and flat screen. So upgrades in this era of car stereo were a lot more common, a lot easier for the average person to do, and you do so for features or sound quality. And speaking of features, it's interesting, in 96, your factory Honda radio uh, might come with a tape because that was more common, but in 2001, might be a CD. But each of these could control the other, uh, the other one as an add-on. And by the way, manufacturers were notoriously behind the times on getting features into the vehicles, which they still are, but that's a whole other video. Uh, what do I do with all these things? Well, we showed a couple years ago how it was easy to power a car stereo in a workshop or home environment with a 12 volt power supply from an old PC, something else you might have lying around, an old desktop PC. But I wanna take this concept to the next level and have two car stereos. Ever since watching the movie Career Opportunities and seeing the bumbling thieves desiring to install the entire car stereo display at Target, I wanted the same thing. Is it? No, 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 the whole thing. We'll just lay it down in the back. We got multi-cassette capabilities. Think of the sound. That's right, this is a true tower of car stereo power. It lets me play a tape, or if I get tired of listening to the tape, I can easily pop in a CD and listen to that as well. But it's a powerful system, but, but don't applaud yet. What, what, what makes this so interesting that it merits a YouTube video? Well, one does not simply just connect two car stereos to the same set of speakers, otherwise bad stuff's gonna happen. There's two amplifiers, you know, connected, they'll drive back into each other. So I had to figure out a way to make this work and not destroy the car stereos. How did I do that? Well, the secret's inside this bag right here that I just got in the mail from Amazon. Let's open it up and see what's inside. And it's another bag. No, wait, no, there's more to it than that. This is actually a bag full of relays. You could think of these relays like the light switches in your house, but instead of flipping the switch between one position and the other manually with your hand, these relays change position based on the presence or absence of current on a coil. So I'm using three relays, one for the left speaker, one for the right speaker, and one for the power. So when I activate the relays, I'll basically be switching my speakers and power from one car stereo to the other. Let's see how that works. It's all controlled through some toggle switches at the bottom of the box. Now on the wall to your left, you should see two toggles side by side. Oh, oh, toggles? What do you mean toggles? Are you talking about switches? And it should go without saying that there's a standard disclaimer. This should be considered for informational purposes only. I am probably not qualified to do this, but essentially, in addition to applying power to the car stereo of your choice, the secondary car stereo also applies power to the relay. So it causes the relay to switch the speakers from the primary stereo to the second stereo. I also have this third switch for one of these Bluetooth adapters. We did a video about that earlier, but it died. Uh, it worked for a little bit and then died. It runs on five volts. So I'm gonna have to order another one of those. In addition, on the side of the box, another feature is I added an external antenna, just some old antenna from some old thing I had that uh, helps pick up those weak stations. And also there's a little wire that comes out of the side that plugs in the back of the Pioneer Stereo's auxiliary input. So if you wanted to hook up, you know, a Walkman or a phone or something, you could just plug in there. So that's how it looks up front. Let's turn around and look at the wiring in the back. On the left side of the box, you see the two relays at the upper left. Uh, they take inputs from the speaker outputs of both car stereos, then routed out through that terminal strip to which the single set of speakers is connected. And here is a close-up where you can see the relay switching. The computer power supply is held in at the bottom with a little tab I have stuck on the bottom, and it's removable in case it goes bad, because they do go bad. Another thing I did uh, with the computer power supply was connect it using a connector. So I could, if it goes bad, I can just unplug that connector, take it out, and replace the supply. I also have to simulate the computer being on, which you short that pin, that's well documented, to activate the power supply. Now, on the uh, power side, each radio requires constant power, which is those well, yellow wires, and then the ignition is simulated through the power on those toggle switches I showed earlier, which activates that. This power interrupt relay just turns off the Pioneer stereo when the secondary or Ford stereo is turned on. 
just an added safety measure. I didn't necessarily need that. And then the antenna wire is a thick wire stuck in the middle of that connector that gets routed over to the bolt, which connects to the antenna I showed earlier on the outside of the box. And here's the power override system in action one more time. So if I turn on the Pioneer stereo, I'll flip the first switch and you'll notice it lights up. It's kind of hard to see there, but you see it says tuner. And then if I flip on the Ford stereo, it's going to disable that. It's going to turn off the power to the Pioneer. Watch that and boom, the Ford's on. That top one is off again. And that's just like a little extra little safety thing. So I'm never going to fire up that Pioneer and uh, blast it into disconnected speakers. So anyway, now when I turn off the Ford, it comes back on. And that's really about it. All that's left to do now is install it in the garage. What do you think? Uh, it's pretty good. Thanks for watching and... Uh, we'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye. Bye.